I'm going to go back in and check this food plot that we made last year that's back in the woods. This is one of the spots where I'm expecting that we would have a chance to possibly encounter this buck that we had nicknamed Lefty. We don't know that Lefty is even still alive, unfortunately. Uh, all I want to do is make sure that the clover we planted in, in there still looks good. And it's not too weedy. I mowed it uh, maybe a month ago. If it needs some help, we'll, we'll come back and maintain it. Otherwise, we're just going to sneak in, look at it, and sneak out. I was hoping that I could just come in here and find it uh, perfectly clean. There's not a whole lot of the tall grass in here. I pulled a lot of it out just by hand. Uh, so I'm gonna come back in here and spray this. I was hoping not to have to, but I gotta come back in anyway. The tree stand is over my right shoulder here. And these trees have grown up between the tree stand and the food plot. And it's gonna be really tough to make any kind of a shot out into this food plot. So I'm gonna bring that Hoyman electric saw in here. That's pretty quiet going. I can reach up in there and top off these two trees spray this real quick, maybe spread a little quick fertilizer on here, and then get out of here. Uh, not a lot of intrusion, not bad in August. I was hoping just to be able to completely avoid making any kind of you know, human intrusion here, but um, there's some stuff that needs to be done to make this more huntable. Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Scott Archery, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Easton Arrows, RTP Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Deer Grow, Ozonics, Wilderness Athlete, Grizzly Coolers, Redneck Hunting Blinds, and Nikon. I'm going to show you this new Hoyman Premium Tree Saw. Uh, this is an electric tree saw, and I've been using this thing all summer. It's an extension saw, or extension pole saw, I guess they call them, and I've never used one that worked better than this. It's electric, so it's quiet. Uh, you don't have the fumes, you know, you don't have, uh, you know, the pull start, hoping it starts like you do sometimes with the gasoline models. It's got enough power to cut through just about anything. I mean, we've cut through trees with this thing that are, you know, four inches in diameter, five inches in diameter and handled them. The other spot that we're going to go to in a little bit, it's a, a redneck blind with some cedar trees that are blocking the view down through this longer food plot. So with filming, you know, we have to have more than just shooting lanes. We also have to have the video lanes. So we're gonna attack that one next. And I'll show you how well this thing works. Pretty dang impressive. So you can see it made real short work of you know, the top of the tree was probably two to two and a half inches in diameter there and you know, cut that right off. So now I got one more tree to go here and this spot will be opened up and ready for fall. If you go back to the preview show last week, you will see a really nice 10 pointer on there with one really super long brow tine. The other one looks pretty good too. That deer was living right in this area. There is uh, some crop in this area. There's a standing cornfield, but I wanted to have something that after everything got harvested and picked through on the corn, that the deer would still be anchored in this area. So I took this uh, one acre spot here, a little over an acre, and planted it to Big and Beastie. And it's coming up really good. This has this been a week ago. And we use the uh, RTP Genesis drill. So I'm going to go back now one week in time and show you how that process unfolded. I've got a project today on the farm and I've got Mike Moyer here from RTP Outdoors. They're the makers of the Genesis Cedar. And the project 
is uh, planting Big and Beastie into a couple of different places. We're gonna be rescuing uh, some of these spring planted food plots and creating some uh, from scratch. So Mike Moyer is gonna talk to us a little bit about the, the cedar. First of all, it is a true no-till, as you said. And so the difference being that uh, we're relying upon cutting power to cut through existing sod layer and organic material left over from last season's food plot or if you're starting a new food plot. So um, you're relying on, on that material with your kill as mulch mm -hmm. to cover that existing uh, weed stand and keep them from germinating. And then, uh, of course, we're planting directly into the ground. Mm -hmm. We have good seed to soil contact and uh, able to hold moisture. Other thing that's interesting about this drill is it will plant everything from soybeans down to clover that's out right. of one seed bin. One box, that's yeah. correct. And we're going to be running the uh, Big and Beastie through there, which is a pretty small seed. And you guys have already calibrated this for the Big and Beastie ahead of time, so we don't have to mess with the actual calibration. But what's interesting to me is you can take something that will plant a seed that's as big as a pea or as big as a, you know your, your little fingernail all the way down to basically a grain of sand. That's um, right, and it makes it easy for everybody mm -hmm. coming in if uh, you, you plant multiple different kinds of seeds. You can use one box and one machine and not have to switch machines or mess with multiple boxes. So we're down at the food plot now, and this is the spot where that buck was showing up here. Uh, I guess it's been a couple weeks ago now, but the guys were filming him out of that standing corn on the other side of this food plot, and he was coming out into a, a little clover patch up above here. So, you know, the deer lives in this area. Last year we saw him down here. Pretty good chance he's gonna be here this fall. We're gonna no-till this food plot. So Mike is gonna talk with us a little bit on how we set the depth on these discs so we get the seed to the correct depth. Uh, how shallow can we plant with this cedar? We can plant all the way up to quarter inch um, and even more shallow. Uh, the machine will set a pin to half inch and then we can adjust the top link to bring it more shallow from there. Okay, so do you think a half inch would be about right for this? Because we're gonna leave the, 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 the seed path open, I assume, right, to a certain extent? Because it's not going to completely close back, or is it? It should completely close. Okay, so then we probably want to go quarter inch. That's correct. Okay. Big and Beastie is actually doing really well in this plot. That's just in uh, one week of growth. The steps involved on this one, uh, uh, obviously I mowed it first before we planted it. I didn't have time for it to grow back and then spray it, which would have been ideal. So I mowed it, no-till drilled with the Genesis, then I came back again before the seeds could germinate and sprayed with Roundup over the top of this. And that's not the best way to do it because you don't get the leaves coming up on the plants. So you don't get a very good kill when you're just spraying stems. So, okay, sprayed it and then fertilized it and uh, used a heavy rate of nitrogen and some P and K and uh, hit it with some of the, the uh, uh, plot start to get the pH levels good and to get the you know, soil in, in a real healthy condition. So those are the steps and you can see how this thing did. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. I'd say we're on the very end of the planting window for Big and Beastie right now. Uh, we're, we are still uh, working on a few projects. We're doing a small amount of, of uh, broadcasting Big and Beastie into beans yet. So anyway, now let's uh, uh, talk about not only this spot, uh, where that one buck, we haven't named him yet, popped out that we filmed for the previous show, but we also did the same thing over on another part of the farm where hopefully we can find Lefty. You know, we keep talking about that deer and, and we will know within a few weeks whether he's here or not. In the area where we were getting photos of him last year, we want to make that as attractive as possible. So uh, we did the same thing there, drilling uh, Big and Beastie into a soybean plot that didn't take from the spring planting. And we also did a, a bunch of uh, work on the clover plots that were in that area. A typical uh, effort that we do with clover now is I'll mow it one time during the summer, usually June. And then after that, I really want the clover to take over. Some people will mow it a number of times, but 
you know, I feel like you can overdo it because you put a lot of stress on the plant when you mow it because then it has to put all that energy back into growing. And then after that, hopefully the broad leaves are gone and then we're just dealing with the grasses. Uh, so in this case, we came in with that clethodim based herbicide and the brand that I'm using is called Intensity. Spray it, kill the grass out, and then come in with a really strong rate of P and K fertilizer. But now is the time to hit that stuff. It'll, it'll give you a little bit of a, a flush of growth this fall, but then uh, the P and K stays in the soil and it's really almost like a two year deal. You'll get a, a lot of use out of that next year too. So that's, that's been the, the last week's worth of work around here and we're coming close to the end of it now of the food plot work and the preparation from that standpoint. Hopefully now we've got most of the food plot work out of the way, got everything planted in the right places and, and uh, we'll keep these deer uh, localized in the areas where we can hunt them. A few weeks ago, Drew and I took a little break and we went out to Montana and fished uh, the Bighorn River for trout and stayed at the Bighorn River Lodge. I couldn't imagine the bugs not hatching today. And so it's supposed to be pretty low. So, so are the fish in there now? They just aren't rising or do they move in? No, nah, they're in there. Sitting there waiting. As you can see, we had a lot of action on the Bighorn, and our hosts at the Bighorn River Lodge did a great job for us. Uh, Cody Rolf owns that. He's from Kansas, and uh, he's a hardcore whitetail hunter. In fact, that's how I ended up meeting Cody in the first place, was through the, the whitetail deer hunting channels. But I guarantee you, we will be back again. We, either we caught it just right, but I think the, the Bighorn can be this good consistently almost through the entire year. We caught both brown trout and rainbow trout, and the fish aren't giant on the bighorn. You're gonna catch them up to 20, 21 inches. Um, but we caught a lot of fish in that 15 to 18 inch range and just had the time of our lives. As good as the fishing was, we had just as much fun around camp. Everybody was there to relax and have fun. We had great camaraderie and made some fine new friends. Well, that's it for this week. I pretty much hogged this week's episode, but next week it's gonna be uh, devoted more to the public land updates from the crews that are hunting on public. We want to get all these stories going and this is the perfect time to do it. We'll talk equipment, uh, we'll talk uh, food plot strategies, we'll talk hunting strategies, white-tailed deer patterning, all that stuff over the next couple of weeks. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail and remember to always dream big. <laughs>